All right, folks, we're going to get started here pretty soon. I'm going to orient myself to the camera view and make sure you all can hear and see well. Um, make sure we have the light correct as well. Um, let's see. Come over here. Do the trick. If anybody wants to give me a little thumbs up that you can hear me, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Test, test, one, two, one, two, one, two, looks good. Alrighty. Okay, it is 5.30 on Arizona time on a Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time to do another flamenco dance lesson today. Uh, thank you all for your continued support and participation. Um, if this is class is new to you, welcome. Uh, we're based here in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I've been dancing flamenco since I was uh, 21, or 22 rather, 45 today. So I've been doing it for a little while. I'm a dad, father of two, uh, married to my wife since 2002. So a uh, family man and uh, glad to come and invite you into my family on some, some small level. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Firstly, uh, we have to pay to use a studio to rent it, obviously. This is not my studio. And uh, I'm using proceeds that go beyond the studio rental uh, toward um, gifts to Arizona arts organizations. So if you would consider contributing $7 or more to this class or future classes through the link in the uh, description of this video, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, another thing in the description of the video, is a survey. So uh, a lot of you have participated already and I'd like to keep it going. Essentially I'm asking what kind of material and content would you like to see in these videos? So far, people are, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a huge lead, but people are very interested in learning structure, communication, and uh, communicate, uh, communication structure and improvisation, uh, which, which I love teaching. So uh, that's in the lead so far. Footwork drills and choreography is just, just below that. But if you want to tip the scales one direction or the other, uh, see the, the link to the survey in the, in the description and go ahead and vote on your favorite one. And uh, of course, last but not least, all my social media ha uh, handles and information is also in the description. Let's get into it today. So I'm going to give you an additional step for Tientos at the end of class. And the work that we do up until then, technique-wise, will complement uh, that step. In other words, hopefully some of the things we talk about in the class today will prepare you to do that step even better after you've learned it. And I will do a separate video breaking down that step uh, this weekend. So let's get going. Let's, uh, at least for the warm-up, I'd like to face, face you all, okay? So let's let the uh, chin go to the chest, let the back of the neck stretch, slump the shoulders, relax. And then taking the chin up to the ceiling. Now we're going to go down again and slump and then we're going to take the chin to the ceiling and curve and open the chest to the ceiling now. And then I go down. Let's go down all the way. Relax your head, your neck. Hold your arms. Legs are straight. You don't have to lock out your knees, but keep your knees nice and long so you're getting a nice hamstring stretch. And then we'll roll up the spine. Looking up and then back down again. Nice active stretch today. And roll up. Let's wake that spine up. And down, one vertebra at a time, all the way to the coccyx. And reverse that. Take the feet apart a little bit. Let's take the arm, reaching like a crescent. Actually, let's put the feet together and push the hips that direction. Keep the bicep by your ear. 
Relax this arm. And let's switch. So we're here, little by little, rounding out, stretching the ribs open. Notice this arm's nice and relaxed. Bicep by the ear. Oh, and back up. Okay, good. Let's roll the shoulders. Involve the torso in this movement. I'm not moving my arms. I'm moving my core. My arms are following what my core is telling me to telling them to do. And as I come forward, because see how my arms are relaxed. So this is a good way to test. Am I moving my arms uh, from what they call a distal plane, which is from the outside in, or am I starting from the inside and moving out? That's what you want ultimately is to move from the middle out. This is what we talk about when we're talking about core movement. So I'm rolling my scapula up and down my uh, rib cage. So everything's closer, moving from the center. Okay, good. Let's, uh, let's practice our weight carriage. So first I'm gonna sit back, my back hip, left foot on the floor, and I'm gonna go from here to weight between, to weight forward, weight between, weight back and switch. Now I'm sitting on my left hip, weight between evenly, weight forward, weight between, weight back. Weight between, weight forward, between, all the way back. Weight's back in my left hip, put the heel down, weight between, lift the back heel here, put all the weight in this front hip, weight forward, between, and back. Now we're just gonna go all the way forward and all the way back in one smooth motion. Notice I start in opposition, so I'm rotating my spine. Then when I put weight forward, I rotate my spine in the opposite direction. Then back, opposition, same side, opposition. Let's throw a seven position in there now. Switch. Now let's keep, we're gonna start same side, so this would be opposition. This is same side, so my left leg's out and my right arm, I'm sorry, my right leg is out and my right arm is out. I'm gonna move forward a little bit. And I'm gonna, as I bring my weight forward, I'm now in opposition. And as I come back, same side again. And now, opposition, weight forward, same side, weight back. Go ahead and look over your front shoulder in both cases. So I start here. As I come forward and rotate, my focus goes over my right shoulder. As I come back and switch. Okay, good, shake it out. Okay, let's start off with something a little smaller and then we'll build from there. So today, we're gonna to work on what I call pitos. So when you snap your fingers, it's a rhythmic tool, uh, and kind of an aesthetic tool too because of the, the way you're holding your hands here and your fingers. It's kind of an aesthetic tool too, like bullhorns in a sense. So pitos, you might struggle at first to get a good, loud, crisp sound. So let's work on exercises that will strengthen the forearms and uh, some of the muscles in the hands, okay? If there are muscles, I'm not sure if it's just muscle tendon or how it works exactly, but I know uh, strength can be built in the hands, however that happens. Uh, but I've got 
some exercises for you that will help with that. So um, just relax everything. Now, I want you to try to get a nice, strong snap. Now, if you'll notice, I like to lift my pinky up, and at first, that's going to that's gonna make your snap weaker because uh, – you won't, your hands won't get as tired and your forearms won't get as tired as when you're doing this. But once you do this, you're creating a tension, kind of like maybe the, the string on a bow and arrow. It goes against the action of your snapping. So you might have a weak, weak sounding snap at first, but you're going to develop strength by keeping the pinkies up. And it looks nice too, right? So up close, I'm here. Notice my pinkies move a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep them out as opposed to keeping everything in. Now notice when I do, when I keep all my fingers here, that it muffles the sound, it, it doesn't have that pop. See how different that is? So if you want a nice crisp sound, putting that pinky up is a good way to do it. Now, here's a little drill. So you're gonna, you're gonna bunch up your fingers underneath your thumb and you're gonna act like you're flicking water off your fingertips. And you're gonna do that over and over. And flick hard, like you're really trying to make the water fly. Fly off those fingertips here from the side. And ultimately, your forearms are gonna get tired from this action, but we're not done. Now you're gonna rev your motorcycle here. So now you're starting open hand, and you're going to grab. So grab back. Do it over and over. Again, your forearms, different muscles in the forearms are going to get tired. This is not a bad thing. You might be surprised what happens next. Let's flick it a few more times, faster, and grab. Ooh. My arms are getting tight. Now, try snapping. See how loud that is? That's louder than I was doing it before. Interestingly, I couldn't tell you exactly why that works. Presumably, it gets all the muscles working and wakes them up in unique and specific ways that help with this, okay? Let's put that into a pattern now. And if, you're, if your pitos are weak, don't worry about it. It's just a, just keep, Working through it, eventually they'll get stronger if you just keep doing it. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just kind of mark. Let's think in terms of three. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. If the arms are going, you just keep it up here. Use the arms. All right. My feet will start getting weak there at the end, but that's what will happen. Once you develop these, you can do all kinds of nice stuff. It's a tool. Instead of clicking your mouth, it'll help you keep compass while you're doing Intricate steps. Uh, it's it's something that just adds nice nice sound to. For example, just nice little uh, marking steps. It just gives it. It just adds a nice groove, um, and it helps with the sonicette of the music that's happening. So uh, practice that. Remember, flick, grab, apply. All right, pitos, p i t o s. Okay, so let's uh, work on some footwork drills in the, the uh, what's it called, the survey that I just did. People indicated interest for sure in footwork drills, so we're going to do some. Today we're going to do redobles. A redoble is a, a step that in many sounds crunch together and it usually is a way to finish a, big, uh, a bigger step. You've probably done them. For example, heel double uh, would be one type of redoble because you're just dropping the heel and doing a double 
one B. So, ultimately you want to be able to do it condensed and fast. But, so there's heel double, there's heel double single, one, two, three, four. Let me get in there. There we go. Condensed. For example, there's single, double, single. Or the other side. Right, single, double, single. Then there's one more we'll add today, which is toe heel double single. Toe heel double single. On the other side. Okay. Heel double. Heel double single. Uh, and toe heel double single. I think that's what we did. No, single double single and toe heel double single. So. We're going to make a pattern out of this, all right? Let's take the first one. We're going to do it, then we'll add arms. We're going to add a bridge so you can go from one side to the other. So at first, you're going to do them all on the left side. You're going to go. So we're going to do that many, and then you're going to do on the last one, jab heel. From there, you're going to put down your toe heel. Okay? So we're thinking in fours now, or eights, how you prefer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Then we'll do the other side, starting on the right. Let's just do that one. That's a heel double single. So we're going to use that one over and over. Five, six, seven, eight. Again. That's a good little footwork drill. We can get more uh, uh, complex with the arms, which we will do, but let's try some of the other steps before we go more, we go further into use of the arms, or complex use of the arms. So now we're going to do the same exact thing, but it's single, double, single. So it's an entire golpe, two golpes, and another single golpe, which is this. Just gonna keep the arms. That bridge again, if you forgot it, is here. Jab heel and put down the toe heel. Alright? I'll do it a little slow, count it out. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, make sure your hips are moving, right? So while I'm doing it, I start out here, right? Because I'm lifting my foot. So when I put, when I, when I put this foot down, my weight shifts to that side until I put my double down. So I'm here. Right? It's easy to forget to let your hips loose, but you need loose hips to be able to do fast footwork. It's a thing that'll keep you in the game. If you lock up your hips, suddenly 
you're going to be thrown off kilter. You're, uh, you're not, your body's not absorbing the shot correctly in a way that allows the finer muscle groups to work the way they need to. So make sure your hips are moving. Let's try a single, double, single. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Again. One more, then we're going to add a variation within that step. Okay, that'll let, allow us to move back and forth in space. Toe heel double single. Two, three, four, five. Right side. Speed now, starting the left foot. Five, six, seven, speed would increase as well so it's meant for all those things now we're going to do that again let's think about how we can make the arms a little more interesting more challenging so let's try starting on one side and every time we do it they'll blame we're gonna to switch to the other, so here's what I mean. We'll start with heel double single. We'll start here. Then. If you know what I mean, okay? So we're here. I'm sorry, it should always be the same foot. You got slower now. Five, six, seven, eight. So notice one thing that helps me remember in my body movement is that once I do this bridge step and I start doing that part. If I start moving in that direction a little bit, it helps. It helps me along because my body's anticipating moving in that direction. So in a way, my body's telling me already, adjust your feet because you're about to go in that direction. Okay, because you're anticipating it. So let's do it again. Da, 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 da. Da. So the first one, then switch. Ah, uh, something messed up. Oh, I didn't do. I didn't go to my right foot. That's where I messed up. Again. Again. I 
How'd you do? Let's try it with single, double, single. I think heel, double, single is easier. Single, double, single a lot. You really have to let your hips go to, to do it successfully. So let's go slow and see if we can do it. Left side, over and over. Five, and switching your body. Five, six, seven, eight. Some didn't work. Let me try it again. There it is. Again. Left. Yeah. Last one before we add a variation. Toe heel double jab. So we're here slowly. Five, six, seven, eight. It's a good challenge for your coordination as well. Okay, so we're gonna add, we're gonna do both of those things the, the amount of times that I did. Left, right, left and right. Then a variation, which is just gonna be this. Toe, heel, toe, heel, jab, heel, toe, heel. So plancha. We're doing triplets, okay? So if we're going five, six, seven, eight, we're going. Okay? Let me look for the message. Uh, you got it. Carmelo. Pleased to, pleased to meet you, by the way. Okay, so. We're gonna go as we as we do that that variation. Again. And end it, okay? So I'm gonna be moving backwards. Um, let me get over here so I have some room to move back. So the whole thing is gonna be this. I'm sorry, I didn't use my body chain, surf. So we're gonna do it again. comes in and you start all over again with the next redoble which will be single double single now we're going to start traveling this step so let's do the single double single but now it's going to travel forward and that other step is going to take us back to our starting point so I can see I'm still in the screen here so for example I'm going to go
You start the next little bit. All right, we're about at the halfway point. So let's get, go ahead and start uh, working on that intento step I was telling you about. If you're new to this, you won't be aware probably that in this class we've been working on tientos elements of a choreography. Um, I don't like to teach choreography over Kante necessarily, not strictly, because that for me is the room where there's a lot of uh, uh, improvisational uh, possibility. Um, so giving it, if I give you choreography with Kante, then they have to sing it just the way I had imagined they were singing it. Whereas if we give you freedom to mark and throw in steps where, they're, where they work, now whatever they sing or however they sing it, you can adjust. The other steps are where you're in total control, like the opening llamada por tientos that I gave, and then the escobilla por tientos, the full work section. You're in control of that. And then uh, it's unlikely the singer will come in and sing over you while, while you're doing that stuff. So you're safe in that, in that regard, in all likelihood. Not that it has never happened, but if you're being clear, chances are they're not going to sing over your footwork, okay? And just like you're not going to stomp over their cante, it's a nice little trade-off. Okay, so the step is as follows. I'm going to give you the base step, and you're going to do it over and over within this little pasito. You're going to go. Okay? So it's toe heel double. And then a jab. And then planta, planta. So it goes. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a golpe. Then the jab on the other side. Again, over and over. So initially, this is going to turn into a step where you you do turns, but we're not going to do the turns yet, okay? So we're here. And then close out that one, okay? Sorry. One. Two. Adding on. One. Two. So that is just a heel and a golpe. So if we're, if we're counting it out, we're going one, two, I'm sorry, one. Sorry. It's hard to, it's hard to count and do it at the same time. Seven, two, three, four, so you're going seven, eight, one. All right, five, six, seven, eight. All right, all we got after that is the last, the last little step that closes it out. It's a short step. Right? Ticararata, the last one. Okay, actually, I'm going to extend that now. So we did. So we go. Ah, there's a little pause. So it's all going to be chiflon is what you've been working on, or if you don't have chiflon, all golpes. Okay, so we're going. We'll go pa, 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 four times. Think. I'm 
I'm not sure yet. Hold on. Pa, 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 pa. So you're going to do three after the, after the golfe. Go. Go flat, flat. That's your way of leading back into the one. So we go. Seven, eight. Let's try it with a little compas so you can hear what it sounds like. Now I'm going to be using tangos, which is different than tientos, as you may know. Tientos is kind of like tango slowed way down, and there's a different rhythmic feel. But it's kind of hard to grab onto this particular tientos uh, uh, sound because they don't feel in it. They don't feel it in a lot, so it's a little bit hard. Uh, so we'll do tango slow, which will give us like a tientos kind of tempo. All right. Let's see where we're at. Five, six. This should do the trick. Five. Okay, now I'm gonna add arms, and we're gonna have to do turns and arms at the same time because they're, they're interconnected conceptually. So, I start here, weight is in my right hip, left arm forward, and I'm gonna do a turn here, seventh position, and back to where I started, okay? So before I actually do the turn, I'm going, Slower. Again. All right. So now with the turn, oh my glasses right here with you guys are safe. I'm gonna spot myself, spot my own eyes here in the mirror, or if I don't have a mirror, I'm fixed on one thing so I can. Uh, spot my turn, I'm going to go. All right, let's see how you do. Slowly, E. Right? So if I did it a little more up to speed and without too much uh, slowing it down here or delay. So I want to get this arm forward in time so I can switch my body and get back to my starting position, okay? So I'm here. All right. So you're only gonna do two turns, fortunately, right? E. Flick your hands. 
Keep the elbows up. All I'm doing is like this. Shoo, shoo fly, like you're shooing flies away. Right? So I did. And I like to also do my arms at increasing levels, right? So I go. Along with, so. And then you just walk out of it. Keep a nice strong position though, okay? Let's put it all together, see how we do. Five, six, seven, eight. Try with a little compass. step you can use many different ways. Now I just talked about how I don't like to choreograph specifically to a cante, a letter a cante, because they might sing differently than uh, I'm expecting them to. But with these types of little steps, you can fit them and weave them into the cante. So if you've ever heard of what's called a respiro, it's where the singer will sing a line of cante in a letter. And then they'll, they'll take a breath for, for a compas, at least one compas. And that's where a nice little step like this would go right in. You have to be familiar with con, uh, letras of cante, but that's something we can address when we start to talk about communication and improvisation. Um, I would just recommend listening to old school uh, cante just to get familiar with the, the letras. If you speak Spanish, it's great, it's, that's a great advantage for you. If you don't speak Spanish, you can still familiarize yourself with the melodies, okay? A lot, there's, because there's a lot of letras that use the same melody, they just use different words. And there's plenty of different ways they can do it, but there's common ways they do it. And when you lock into those common ways that they, they, they put in melodies, then it won't take you by such a surprise if you're improv improvising a, a solo, for example. So um, I'll, in a future video, I'll, I'll put some names down for you, people that were, would be good to, to listen to. Respiro is similar to remate. So here's the difference. A remate can be, it can be a, a long, a step with a big ending, like a big rhythmic ending, like the dobles we were doing, right? That's like a remate. Or even this little, this little step we did could be considered a remate because it has this close, right? Um, a respiro is something we refer to in the context of cante. So if I, uh, if I, if I say, um, hablo con mi Dios y le digo, hablo con mi Dios y le digo, So that little silence there, that one from Basa silence, that's a, uh, that's a respiro. It means to take a breath, so the singer is taking a breath before they continue. And this step will go perfect in that context, okay? So, let's say I'm marking and he's singing. 
hablo con mi Dios y le digo, hablo con mi Dios y le digo. Okay? Now that was that step was all messed up, but you get the idea. He finished, and that was my chance to come in and put a little little spice into it, right? Fill up that little respiro. It doesn't mean we have to fill up all the silence. It's just a place where you could do it, right? Okay, so let's go over the step again a couple more times, and uh, we'll call it a night. I'm gonna take out my glasses once again. by themselves at first until you get comfortable. Then you can turn it. And I didn't whip my head as violently as I normally would because I got my glasses on. But a uh, nice little step. So once we start understanding all these different elements of tientos, you will be able to improvise an entire baile. And it doesn't take much to be able to do that. People think you have to have all these steps and every time there's something happening, you have to move and you have to, you have to be inserting a bunch of material, but that's not true. Especially when it comes to the cante. The cante is the part where you get to relax for a second and, and let, the, let the singer draw it out of you as opposed to imposing it imposing this nervous energy upon everybody else is the idea okay so practice um, like i said before if you want to contribute to keep these classes going please see the uh the link in the bio in the description uh do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already uh, do check out my other social media handles and please take the survey in this description it'll help you shape the future direction of these uh these classes um, thank you, Carmelo. It's, it's been a genuine pleasure to have made a new friend. Uh, come back next Thursday. I'll be here. And I uh, look forward to this, uh, this weekend when I put this very step, break broken down, onto a video and upload it, okay? Have a great weekend.